Anyone who wants to follow him must be ready to make him the first priority in life, over and above one's family. This is what the expression of hate father and mother means. Second, he must be ready and willing to take up his cross. And third, he must be ready to renounce all his possessions. These are the conditions of one who would, if one who would like to, to consider seriously to follow Jesus. He cannot say yes now, and then when confronted with serious challenges, decide to turn away. You know, a song of the Charismatic Renewal Movement beautifully expresses this song. And if you know this song, you can sing with me. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world, the cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. We cannot live our lives without any responsibility of making choices in life. In fact, to be given many choices is also a sign of our freedom. Because if we have no choice, then you are not free anymore. Since there's only one option. Some choices in life are simple, like do you want Coke or Pepsi? Or McDonald's or Jollibee for Filipinos. <laughs> My favorite. But other choices are more serious and bigger, like to buy a house and live here in Vegas or to live in another state. You can choose to study to, make, to take up nursing, like most Filipinos, according to Jokoy, <laughs> or engineering or business. You can choose to get married or stay single. All of these are choices in life. Some are important than others, but there is a choice that is more important of all. What is that? God has chosen you and me. And hopefully, we will also choose Him as a disciple. But no matter what the choice is, whether it's about drink, burger, career, spouse, home to live, the reality is this. Every choice demands many renunciations. For example, when you choose to marry your boyfriend and girlfriend, only one, you will say no to other girls and boys, right? When you have chosen to take up nursing, then you have to say no to other career. When you have decided to register here at Holy Spirit, then you say no to St. Joseph or St. Elizabeth and Seton. Clearly, in every choice that we make, there are corresponding renunciations. You cannot be fully committed to your choice if you're not willing to renounce other choices. You cannot be fully faithful to your wife or husband if you're not willing to reject other people who can be a threat to your marriage. You cannot say you are a pro-life person if you think abortion is okay. Whenever we make choice, it would necessarily mean many more renunciations. And the choices become lesser and lesser if we don't want to renounce other things because we're just collecting choices. It is the same in our life. Like, Lord, I want to follow you, but I like steak on Friday. I want to follow you, Lord, in your simplicity, but a warm and comfortable bed at Bellagio is nice. I want, I want to honor you, Lord, on Sunday, but attending Mass online is more comfortable than driving in this heat. You might say, I want to give my life to you, Lord, but there are so many things I have to do. So choice and renunciation always go together. You cannot say yes, but not courageous enough to say no. Because that's where holiness lies. You want to be holy? Be able to say yes. 
You want to be holy? You have to be able to say no to whatever is in, not consistent to your yeses. And so the gospel is very clear today. There are some points in our lives when we can get confused, get tired of doing what is good and living what is true. Just like the question of the builder. If he got enough resources to finish the tower or the king calculating his chances of winning in a war. Yes, we all want to be good, I presume. But we are tempted by the attractions of many sin around us. And then what happens? Then you will understand that willpower alone is not enough to say yes. Then you will understand that willpower is not enough to say no. And then you will understand that you need the grace of God to be able to say yes all the time. And you will understand that you need the grace of God to renounce sin all the time. Like, I want to change, but I'm lazy. I want to say the truth, but it might put me into a uncomfortable um, position. I want to serve, well, I want to strive hard, but it seems like I'm not progressing. And then, my brothers and sisters, you will understand that it is not your sheer willpower that will make you successful. You will understand that it's not your willpower alone that will make you holy. We have to be open to the grace of God to make us holy. In my life as a priest, there are many times that I failed, but also there are boundless times that I rose again in God's grace. So I underwent process of purification, purgation in my vocation. I learned to embrace my own humanity with its limitation and weaknesses as a source of my strength and potentials so that I could serve the people of God. It's a difficult process, and because it speaks that all of us who want to follow Christ in this modern world is really demanding. But I made the cross in my life as the source of wisdom and my faith in God as His grace. I believe that in the midst of the challenges of a priestly ministry, God has blessed me with joyful spirit and inner contentment. So I keep renewing my commitment, my choice as a priest, especially when I celebrate Mass. And I have to discipline myself and renounce a lot of things like my, my desire for intimate relationship or have my own family. Or I have to prioritize my ministry over comfort. Last, the other day, I was so tired and because of many appointments and errands I had, went to bed a bit late and have not prepared for my homily for the next mass and the following day. So I, 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 I slept and then been awakened by a call, 12.30 in the morning, emergency for last rite. I said, where are you living? It's outside the boundary. But I reminded myself that I made already the choice five years ago that this is the vocation that I will embrace. I went, and I'm glad I did. You know, I realized that getting up is not a very hard for me to do. But the problem is getting back is harder. I guess I'm getting old. But I want to take this opportunity to catechize you about the anointing of the sick. You call it last rite because that's the last sacrament that a living person can receive. But do not wait for the last minute to call the priest because the truth is anointing of the sick is the sacrament. It contains confession, communion, and anointing. So how can I anoint and confess person who cannot already speak. 
and give the communion as biaticum. Bia, way, te, you, cum, with. Food for the journey. And so, this is for those who are, know you, you know that your, your loved one is passing. But this, I'm not speaking of the, those emergencies, of course. We will always answer to that. But I don't want to be like the angel of death go, going to their, oh, he will die already, you know. You know, renewing our commitment. The celebration of the Eucharist is the perfect moment for us to renew our commitments to our loved ones, to our family. And so if, if spouses now are sitting beside your husband or your wife, or you, with your children, or anyone special to you. Hold your heart and hold the person next to you, especially if you are a married person. Can we do that today? You don't need to wait for your 70 or 50 or 30 years of marriage to renew your vows. You need to renew your vows daily because it, it, can, it can be ugly. Yeah? But having the grace of God, not just our will, will help us get through the married life. And so, I, am, I, I ask all those who are married, hold your hands together and repeat after me. We will renew your vows, okay? Where's that? Okay. I, state your name. Take you, state the name of your husband and wife. I promise to be faithful to you. You have to say it loud, especially not <laughs> as if you mean it, right? In good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and honor you all the days of my life. Amen. Of course, it should be it's still with a kiss. Congratulations. And renew also your relationship with your children, your friends, your own family, even if they are not here. As I renew myself too, and we can too, right? Remember this 3G that I will give you today. Give in, say yes. Give it up, say no to those sins. But when giving in and giving up it becomes difficult, the third G comes in, the grace of God. Believe so that you can easily give up to sin, uh, give up to God, and give in to His grace. Amen. And so let us sing the song again, I have decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back.